Hi folks, I'm Richard G3CWI with Soda Beams. A few weeks ago I did a video about keeping warm in the field. One of the things that seemed to interest people was the way that I sheltered in the field. I showed a bothy bag in that particular video, but today I want to look at a range of options and at the end I'll talk about one surprising option that I'm going to miss out. I've arranged the options that we're going to look at pretty much in order of comfort. We're going to start with a couple of bivy bags, uh, we've got the bothy bag, a couple of different types of tarp, and finally a fishing shelter. Before we dive right in, if this is the sort of video that appeals to you, something about perhaps the more adventurous side of amateur radio, do consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get going. The first option that I'm going to look at uh, is this bright orange survival bag designed to be very easy to see. It's made of a fairly heavy gauge uh, plastic material, polythene, something like that. And uh, the idea of this is that you just crawl inside it. And certainly if you're in an emergency situation, uh, this would be a, a convenient place to operate. It would keep the wind off you. Not hugely comfortable, they can be a bit noisy in the wind, uh, and you do tend to get a lot of condensation in them. Probably not, that's not probably very important if you're only going to be in it for a short period of time. Uh, you'd feel a bit self-conscious, I think, on the hill in one of these. Let's have a go at getting inside it and seeing how you might actually operate from it. First thing you want to do is take your shoes off because you'll find they will catch on the bag. Uh, sometimes it's easier to get into these bags actually standing up. Pull this up around you, get into position, <coughs> and there you are, ready to operate. I think it's fair to say this bag is better than nothing, but only just better than nothing. A slightly more sophisticated type of uh, uh, bivy bag uh, this is this type. This is made of a uh, breathable Gore-Tex type material uh, and uh, it's a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, it has zips to get in and out of it, draw cord hood uh, and really makes things fairly uh, comfortable for operating in. Um, I've used this in extreme conditions on a number of uh, mountains here in the UK. Uh, and I've been very, very glad of it. Uh, one of the nice things about a, a bivy bag is that you're very low to the ground, so you can use the, the slightest little uh, hummocks in the ground uh, to protect yourself a little bit from the wind. Uh, another thing that I found useful for this type of bivy bag was that um, when I used to do a lot of operating and my children were small, uh, they could actually get inside this uh, and play around with games and things, and I could be confident that uh, if I was comfortable outside, sitting and exposed on the hilltop, uh, they were going to be safe and comfortable inside the bivy bag. So let's take a look at it, see how easy it is to get in and out of. I'm going to take my shoes off again. Just makes getting in and out a little easier. You'll notice that I'm using a ground sheet here, uh, and that's really helpful if you're doing this type of operating, because uh, it does mean that you can keep your feet dry. And it's just pegged at the, uh, at the corners. Okay, so this uh, has a zip entrance, so it makes it relatively simple to get into. Uh, it also has a fairly big uh, area for your head. Uh, and that I found in the past that this is quite useful for operating in. So you can set a transceiver up here, uh, run a cable into the uh, through the zip, uh, and lay down and operate quite comfortably. And I've slept in this bag uh, on many nights on hilltops, uh, and particularly on a number of them doing SOTA activations. Getting in is easy enough. Slide yourself through to the bottom. and you're soon tucked out of the wind. Significantly more comfortable than the other type of bivy bag. We looked at the bothy bag in uh, one of my earlier videos, and it's a really popular, very lightweight uh, way of operating out of the wind on a hilltop. And it's surprising how quickly you get warm in one, inside of one of these. Very simple easy, and easy to use, and uh, has a big advantage that you can actually sit up in it. And indeed, you have to sit up in it because that's what maintains the shape of it. Really simple to use, 
Uh, you can do this quite easily sitting down. You simply pull it over your head. And using your feet, you can get those into the corners uh, and there you are, you're ready to operate. So you can't get much simpler and easier than that. Next, we'll take a look at the lightweight tarp. And uh, the main difference between light and heavyweight tarps, apart from the obvious thing is that the, uh, the material is lighter, is that lightweight and rather cheap tarps, I have to say, uh, tend to have these sort of eyelets at the corners. Whereas as we'll see later on with the heavier weight tarp, uh, it's much better made uh, and the corners are all reinforced with proper ties uh, for them. Uh, one of the advantages of this is that uh, you can set up a huge number of different types of shelters. So depending on what you want to achieve, uh, you've got the options and the flexibility with the tarp to, to do that. And I'll show a typical shelter that you might use in a winter situation uh, here in the UK that offers you a nice enclosed uh, and safe area to sit up in and that's pretty wind resistant. For the most basic configuration of this particular tarp sh shelter, all I'm going to need is uh, four pegs and a um, and a walking pole. The walking pole is going to form the sort of apex of the uh, the tent structure. I can actually set it up with three pegs, but um, I'm going to peg the bag here so that it doesn't blow away. If you've done a sofa activation, you'll know what I'm talking about. Putting up this shelter is quick and easy. First thing we're going to do is to lay the tarp flat on the ground. I'm going to peg two of the corners. making sure it's nice and taut between them. Then move around to the other side, gather the two corners on this side, line up as best you can uh, with the center of the, uh, the other side, put your peg through and form yourself a pegging point. So there's our pegging point. So you can see we've formed a, a triangle. All it remains now to do is uh, to put a walking pole, uh, which is adjusted just to make the height about right, into the centre, like this. And step inside. I'm roughly the centre point of the, uh, of the construction. The walking pole up and there we are there's our tarp shelter it's really easy to get in and out of inside the, this shelter offers a surprising amount of space you could easily sleep in here uh, it gives you plenty of room for operating uh, the, uh, the the top is quite high so you can easily sit up in it uh, which is a great thing uh, uh, the door opening is quite cool as well, so it does mean that the uh, things, that the whole thing is enclosed, which is good if you're in Australia, extremely cold conditions. Um, I'm, although it's quite cold outside today, the sun's shining, it's actually really boiling hot in here already. Although so, on this occasion I set it up with just three pegs, uh, you can of course peg along the sides as well. Uh, there are pegging points in the, uh, the middles of the sides uh, for this particular tarp, so you can, uh, you can peg it down to make it rather more firm. Uh, you could even guy from the outside the, uh, the centre pole, although uh, I think it's probably unlikely to need it, it's, uh, it's fairly firm. So you can make this quite a nice four season shelter. Uh, there is a room for draft to blow in underneath the uh, uh, under at the sides underneath. Uh, you could just put leaves around the edge um, uh, to help to, to cut that down. Uh, if you were on a on a activation, perhaps in some woods where uh, uh, the wind was blowing. The second uh, tarp that we're going to look at is a much heavier duty tarp. Uh, it has much more sophisticated um, uh, fixings and attachments and many more places that you can attach it. But it's still a three metre by three metre tarp. So, for example, the, uh, the, the um, shelter that I've just shown you, you could equally do with this one. What I'm going to show you now is a more sophisticated type of shelter uh, that is open at one side. Uh, so it'd be good perhaps in the sunshine uh, to keep the sun off you or alternatively if, if conditions were fairly mild and you weren't expecting heavy rain or 
which would be to be particularly cold. The more sophisticated uh, tarp gives you a lot more options in terms of what you can actually do. And uh, this is obviously uh, a slightly bigger shelter. Uh, it doesn't need a ground sheet because it has its own ground sheet. And uh, in fact, I'm going to be sleeping in this one tonight. Finally, I'm going to look at this uh, fishing shelter. These are very widely available. Uh, they're often sold also at beaches for uh, beach shelters. They're usually in uh, bright colours um, and they're usually sold in green for fishing. Uh, I chose a green one because I like to maintain a low profile when I'm on the hill. Uh, this type of shelter is, uh, broadly speaking, a sort of half dome shape uh, with one side open, although uh, it can be zipped up. This type of shelter is uh, pretty easy to set up and uh, gives you stacks of room. You can probably lie down in it just about, yes, just about lie down in it. Um, has a nice high uh, roof. Uh, which keeps the rain off really well. I've done quite a few contests in these on uh, hilltops and they, they've worked out really nicely. There are lots of shelters very similar to this and uh, you, the quality will undoubtedly vary somewhat. So you need to be a little bit careful when you're looking at it to uh, just to check it over and make sure that you're happy with what you're getting. Unfortunately, this is an unbranded shelter, so I'm unable to tell you what brand this is, but this is actually quite good. What's the shelter that's missing from this little review? Well, perhaps surprisingly, it's a tent. The reason I haven't shown a tent is that tents tend to be fairly expensive and fairly heavy and take a while to put up as well. So they're not necessarily the ideal thing for quick activations on a hilltop. But the thing that most puts me off tents for radio is that they give people the impression that you're going to be staying for a long time. Uh, and that's not always a, a, an impression that you want to give people in environmentally sensitive areas. I hope you found the video useful. Thanks for watching.